Hi all, welcome to this video. In this video we are going to see about a Kafka connector for moving data from a SQL Server table into a topic. So this is usually in an integration world will be done by an integration tool like this talk we also uh, just someone will create a workflow that, that will pull a data based on periodically it will go and pull the data and if anything new then it will pull it right so that we are going to do it in Kafka. So for that we are going to use it JDBC connector provided by Kafka connector. And this is a self-managed connector, meaning that we need to run this connector and debug if any error. And the runtime will not be provided by Confluent. Uh, for that, I'm using AKS uh, to pull the data, right? So behind the scenes, this connector will create um, to store the offset inside the Kafka. There will be uh, there will be all the topics will be created for this one. Then, so anytime you create anytime you for example any restarts so that it will not be affected and it will be restarted from the topic from the offset that it has left right so it is safe to use it but one thing is you need to create a you need a column that is a date time too so based on it uh, the, if the mode is timestamp it can pull the data periodically to a topic right so this is my table i'm going to insert the data here and i'm going to show you that <coughs> reflected in my topic. I'm going to insert into users. I'm going to use 106. And my name is Randy. And then, then my item to call, right? Insert this column. Okay. Run so it. So this new row should reflect because my connector is running in Kafka. In any case, as your Kubernetes services, so this Randy should be visible, should be visible here. Right. So I'm going to open confident. So this Randy is visible here already. Right. So I'm going to go through with you for the code. This is the Kafka connector confluent code where I need to provide this deployment.yaml file to Kubernetes, right? So this is my image that I have to provide along with this my environment and argument values. So my, I'm going to run this container image, which is a Kafka connect. And the environment is this one. Provide replace with the script like with your bootstrap URI and remaining. It will ask you how with the credentials that it has to connect with bootstrap and the schema registry. Right? Then just provide that. You'll be fine. And one thing is your REST advertised host name is important. That you need to always provide the part name of the Pod IP of the pod that you want to create. So it's dynamic, so it's getting fit from status that pod IP, right? So that is important. If you are creating the task that max property is more than one, that time this this is very crucial to have it. So that is one and remaining things as the same. So first thing, first thing about lab and is based on this environment variable, this image will be deployed, right? Once this image is deployed, your REST services will be up. Now, time to install your connectors. First, install your JDBC connector. This is mandatory to get it um, the JDBC connector and install it in your using this command. Confluent hub install using this div file that, that downloaded in the previous step. After that, you need to copy the jar files into this folder, from this folder to this one, right? Copy from there to, this is CPS copy. And then this is an optional and I have just kept it, um, because it's given by confident, maybe it's optional, right? So I, I'm gonna pro provide the whole script. You can run it without this as well. So. The only only jar file I'm looking for is a JDBC. 
dot sql so once that is done and running right i'm going to install the connector in that uh, pod so i'm going to use this post operation i'm going to do this connectors i'm going to show you how you can see the connectors i have logged in to, into my aks now i'm going to go inside and show you the connector in right? this is the connector i can go inside the bash okay i'm going to do kubectl okay that means it's going to give me the running i'm looking for running um, the part for this so this here it is right so i'm going inside i have a less resource so that's why i'm getting multiple errors in your case it shouldn't be or in any case right so we are inside now i'm going to run this connectors so you the key inside ping will not work Right, most of the ping in Azure it's, it's blocked anyway. It's use curl. So only one thing which is just Kafka DB can two is available, which is provided here. Right, this is the kind of thing that is created here. So the first time when you create it's a post, then after that if anything anything you want to update, it's a put command that you need to keep it in mind. And it, every time you run the read and this one, it's going to be a post, but it's going to work for the first time. Next time. It's just going to be silent, even though if I change the script and run it, the script, this thing is like registered against your uh, cluster, confluent cluster. So you need to be careful of that. Then, okay, I'm done. Mm, okay, one more command I want to show you that is um, okay, NZ that cat command, uh, which will work so easy. But easy. For example, if I want to connect to YouTube.com, and how do you check whether you have access to the external world, right? So this, this is coming. So it's saying, okay, hey, I have access to this through this through this port number, right? Also, if you are running, you are connecting to on-premise, then that time you need to use NZ command with your on-premise uh, server name. That time you'll come to know. So I'm creating this call. Using this call, I am created the connector. Right, how do you see the logs? Go to the logs and give the part name my little gap. Right, so this connector is, is periodically polling the database based on the properties that we have filled it here. So, this is my database server. Uh, sorry, yeah, database server DB name, it, it should be given this way. There are two types of connectors. One is Confluent Managed SQL Server is also there, but we are managing and self-managing, right? So this is going to be deployed in AKS. So that's why we have connectors, uh, sorry, the pods, containers, and then we are installing inside. So the database name is RSDB, username, password, how many items, then what is it? What is the what is the table name? That is users, right? Okay. The mode is timestamp. We have four modes. One is timestamp and our serial number, our serial number is timestamp. If you don't want any miss anything, then timestamp with serial number would be good. But for sample purpose, I have not done it. Then after that, this is the complaint timestamp name. Okay, this is a created one which should have a date time two column name column type right so that's how it will work without any duplicates if you use date time then it there will be you can will be seeing duplicates so better use date time to terabyte right yeah that's it about it this this is a bit hard and this is a, this is a simple deployment yaml file if you shrink it it has only two things the image name is this one your environment is this one so it's about your content and, and, and by content that you're going to connect in the schema registry right also it's it's saying it's showing you that uh, number of uh, so when once you create that right if your uh, part restarts then where do where does the delta is being stored right or the timestamp being stored is actually 
cart plane has will create uh, will create offsets store the offsets in the topic so that you can see it here you can see something called topic prefix yeah this is the storage offset storage this is going to this is using this one it's going to store the offset right and this is for some other purpose yeah okay i think i have explained you everything you mostly get the trouble when you want to connect your aks pointing to your on premise that where that where you need to contact your network team where they will they set up the aks properly for hub and spoke model right your hub should be the main model and spoke you where you create the aks and where in the hub they will be manipulating all the firewalls and rope tables so it should work fine i hope this video will be helpful thank you